The Prime Minister, he's under more pressure from Tory MPs after yesterday's record net migration figures. Yes, they revealed that the population of the UK increased by almost three quarters of a million last year. Now, former Home Secretary Suala Braverman said the figures were a slap in the face to the British public. Well, we're joined in the studio now by GB News political editor Christopher Hope and journalist Benjamin Butterworth. Very good to see you both this morning. And Chris Hope, let's start with you, shall we? Because uh, this could be a Tory war over this issue. Yeah, it's brewing. I mean, they're really cross about it behind the scenes, Tory MPs. This weekend, there's a group called Common Sense Group of Tory MPs. They're preparing a letter to go to the Prime Minister to try and support an idea from Robert Jemrick, who's the Immigration Minister. He's got measures to try and bring this number down. He wants to... Be, we have numbers of 745,000 last calendar year. It's even worse, though, looking at the, the figures for the year to, to, to June 2022, uh, 2023, when it, when it went up to 672,000, up from 607,000. Those numbers were revised upwards in the last calendar year, and that could happen again. So it's a feeling of lack of control. I mean, small boats is one, is a symptom, I think, of a problem with the immigration policy. They can't control numbers coming in. The, the viewers are right, but there are, short, there are short, um, shortages in parts of our social care um, NHS. But equally, there's lots of people on benefits who aren't working. Why not put more effort to get them back to work? There's a housing, housing shortage, we know. Rents are going sky high for many people. Can we afford to have you know, 1.2 million people arriving in the two years to, to June last year. That's the problem. Robert Jenrick, he's the immigration minister. He's got plans to try and um, ban foreign and social care workers, bring in dependents um, to increase the amount of money to come here to 35,000 from around 26,000, as it stands at the moment. That might cut numbers by 50,000. But really, these are just scratches uh, on on where they need to get to. This government elected in 2010 to bring numbers down to tens of thousands a year. You know, people voted in 2016 for control of the borders, but politicians, the Tory politicians, have ignored that completely. And, and Labour agree, don't they, that, that net migration has to be brought down. There, there is broad agreement on that. But what do you bring it down to? What is a fair number? Well, the, the ONS looks at these numbers. They, what what the, the OBR, I should say, the, the official um, budgetary experts, they say we need around a quarter of a million each year to sustain growth. Now... Tories would say, well, why not just use people, rather than paying people to be at home on benefits, get some of them back to work. That's an idea that came out in the autumn statement. Mel Stride wants to say you can work from home. Uh, if you can be at home and work from home, why not do some limited work from home or you lose some of your perks of being on benefits, such as free bus passes. Mm. Labour's against that. I mean, up in Sunderland, we haven't got the clip quite yet, but um, uh, Richie Sunak, the Prime Minister, is saying he's very clear levels are too high. They've got to, got to come down to a more sustainable level He's been clear about that. Yeah, but you're Prime Minister. Get on with it, is what many mm. viewers mm. and Tory supporters might say. Benjamin Busworth, let's, let's just bring you in. Do you think this election could be decided on immigration, or is it more likely to be the economy? I think it's always been a, a big issue. If you look at the polling, it says that things like the health service and the economy, which are in even worse state than some would say migration is, are above it. But I think the truth is that there's a real level of dishonesty in what the government is saying here. Because if you look at what business groups have been saying quite consistently, it's that there are areas of the economy where we have a shortage of workers making it hard for them to function. So that's things like lorry drivers, health care, social care. Mm. And they were calling quite consistently to have more people come into the country for those industries to function. Now, I would suggest that the fact that the numbers are as high as they are is no coincidence. The government, on an economic level, was probably acknowledging that, but it knows that the public perception and the rhetoric that it needs to have going into an election is quite the opposite. And I think what you're seeing here when they say oh, it's far too high, we must come up with new ideas to cut it, despite the fact that they let this happen several years in a row mm -hmm. now, I think that shows the problem they have. And Chris, really interesting, isn't it, as well a broad role in all of this, yeah. tweeting from the back benches now, uh, saying that this is a slap in the face to the British public who have voted to control and reduce migration at every opportunity. She says it's unsustainable. She's going to be a thorn in the side of yeah, Rishi Sunak sure. now, she isn't she? saying this. And of course, she was Home Secretary during this period, or for large parts of this period. So she's got a lot of questions to answer. She would say, were she here, that she's tried to make these points number 10. Number 10, we're, we're ignoring it. I mean, to, to go to ben, Benjamin's point there, he makes a good point about the shortage in, in lorry drivers, but should people be allowed to bring in dependents and mm. family members? That's what pushes the number up. And I think what will happen if they get a grip on this is saying you can't bring family members if you want to work here, at least not for a few years. And Benjamin, the, the, the argument we keep hearing about uh, when it comes to the social care sector is that 
We need migration. Mm. We need those people to work in the social care sector because here people don't want to work in it. Yeah, I mean, many of those jobs are incredibly long hours and not terribly well paid. And so, you know, I think there's a strong argument to say that if you change the paying conditions, then you might be able to get more British born workers wanting to do those jobs. But this suggestion that the immigration minister has put forward that you have to earn at least 35k to mm. be able to come in, well, that would rule out a lot of people coming to this country to work in that sector. And so that seems quite an impractical answer. Because while on the one hand, people might think, oh, I'm glad that there's a few thousand fewer migrants this year. I think when they can't get the health care that they need, that might turn to a, a frustration. And, and the government doesn't seem to be able to square the circle. OK. Uh, Christopher Hope, we, we know that uh, Rishi Sunak has been speaking in the last few That's moments. That's right. I'm in Sunderland, where there's a big investment announced in electric cars, but he's been talking about immigration. Let's see what we have to say. It's good to see that the ONS yesterday did say that the levels of migration are now slowing, in their words, which is a welcome step. But we've got more to go. And that's why I announced a policy earlier to clamp down on the number of dependents that students can bring when they're coming here, where we've seen a very significant rise in that. That action that I took represents the single toughest measure that anyone has taken to bring down the levels of legal migration in a very long time. So that should give people a sense of my commitment to bringing migration down. And if we see further abuse of the system, them, of course we're prepared to act and do more. So there are the PM saying they're prepared to do more. Mentioned there stopping students bringing independence. We might say that's an obvious one, but more measures are required and so far nothing from the government. I mean, where do we go from here? We know that Robert Jenrick has drawn up this set of proposals, mm. obviously not yet policy, but they are going to be discussed internally. It's going to be a much wider conversation about this now, I'm sure. That, that's right. We're trying to get to see what Jenrick has to say about that today and we'll bring it up to GB News viewers when we get it. He says they want to scrap schemes to allow firms that, that they can pay 20% under market rate where there are skill shortages. Why not find Brits to do those jobs? I, I'm not old enough to remember, as, as Benjamin might be, um, Gordon Brown saying British jobs, British workers back in the noughties. Remember that, Benjamin? I mean, it's been a long running issue where employers have been allowed to bring in foreign labour and ignore the labour on their doorstep because it might be too hard to train them up. Mm. What, do you, what do you make of it, Benjamin, when you look at Robert Jenrick's set of proposals? I mean, he's talking, uh, amongst these suggestions, a required minimum annual salary of £35,000 in order to even obtain a work visa to be in this country. I mean, I think that's going to be incredibly difficult to implement because a lot of the areas where we're most short of workers most quickly are the lower paid jobs. Now, a city like London, a attracts a lot of high paid, high skilled workers that I think most people would be a bit more relaxed about. I, I think the truth is that, you know, when David Cameron came into office, he said, as, as, as Christopher Hope referenced, having tens of thousands. Well, the figures for context are three times mm. what they were under Labour and more than double what they were before Brexit of the number of migrants coming into the country. Now, I don't think you need to be anti-migration to say that that's causing practical problems. Now, you could argue that we've got five million people who are on benefits, but a great many of those have health issues which haven't been resolved and so may be difficult to get them back into work. I think the truth is that it's going to be a big political problem for the government because they made this the centre of their agenda as a mm. Tory party and it's not going to be fixed in 12 months when well, the next election Rishi Sunak said, didn't he, uh, stop the boats, which sounds a bit of a gimmick and also potentially a bit of a distraction. Yeah. He would have been better saying reduce net migration, Chris. Mm. 100%. I think it's a distraction stop the boat. It's, it obviously shows a lawlessness on the south coast. They can't stop these boats coming. But I think the bigger issue, the elephant in the room is net migration. That's not being addressed and talked about. For the Tories' point of view, Labour have no real answer either. I mean, Labour have no answer at all. And, may, and maybe there's also a side to this to say, well, it's quite a good thing that people want to come and live here. We know we're not all that bad. and It's a nice country to be in, maybe. Let's just be vaguely positive I mean, about it, Benjamin. Would it's you worth agree with pointing that? out that a significant proportion of, of these figures in the last couple of years, the last year or two, have been either people with the Hong Kong visas that yeah. we decided to make much easier, and often they're very skilled workers, highly educated, and also the Ukraine scheme mm. was a great number of those, and several Afghanistan. hundred thousand, and Afghanistan. And those are migrants, at least in the case of Ukraine, that are highly likely to go back given the opportunity. So maybe these numbers will, will sort of balance out in the years to come. Chris, very quickly, got your ear to the ground. Yes. Yes or no? May election. Oh, goodness. Uh, I think more <laughs> likely than before. Oh.